give you the ubiquitous warning to please silence your cell phones. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our director of athletics, Desiree Reed Francois. Thank you, and good morning. Um, thank, first of all, thank you very much for our board chair, Michael Williams, for driving down from Kansas City to be here. I appreciate you very much, and your support means so much, so thank you. Um, baseball is an important part of our state, our conference, and our community. When we started this search, we listened to input, and we reviewed metrics and analytics in developing our candidate profile. Accordingly, we sought a leader with character, competence, determination, and energy to lead Mizzou baseball back to national prominence. We wanted someone that would develop the absolute best in our young men, both on the field and off. We wanted a tireless and methodical recruiter with the passion and energy to bring our baseball community back together. I want to say a couple of thank yous. First, to our Associate Athletic Director, Nick Grunenwald, a former Division I baseball player at Louisiana Tech. He loves when I say this too. Former Mr. Baseball from the state of Wisconsin. Um, he's going to turn like three shades of red right now, I know it. Um, our Associate Athletic Director, Blair DeBoard, um, who was also a Division I baseball player at Kansas State. He actually doesn't mind when I say the fact that he made it to a super regional as a catcher. Um, I won't talk about the last play of the game, but anyway, I digress. Um, but did not get them to the College World Series. But anyway, I'll, I'll let that one go. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding, Blair. Um, and our senior women administrator, Rachel Blunt, um, who is, she didn't play baseball, but she played women's basketball. We also had the privilege of working with Mizzou's own former Major League Baseball player, and Ian Kinsler. Ian, Thank you for being here. Thank you for the expertise you provided throughout the search. Um, I, we just, words can't say enough how much we appreciate you. He was Mr. 30-30, by the way. Did you know that? Yeah, 30 home runs, 30 stolen bases, pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, President Choi. President Choi's leadership throughout this process, his support for our athletics department is just, I can't say enough about it. Uh, we really appreciate all that he does. Now, we had a very competitive pool of sitting head coaches, rising assistants, um, and those with ties to Major League Baseball. Coach Carrick Jackson, he has the passion and energy to recruit at the highest level. He has unique experience as both an agent and an MLB scout, which serves him very well when he's evaluating talent. He's a native St. Louis uh, baseball player born and raised, his ties run very deep here at Mizzou. His own mother, I just actually learned this, by the way, she actually worked in our athletic department. He didn't even bring this up in the search. But a little brief story. I remember when Memphis announced uh, Carrick's hiring about a, a year and a half ago. And I knew Blair from our time at UNLV, and I knew Blair knew really good baseball coaches. And I was like, who did they hire at Memphis? So I started Googling him and I was like, huh, he's a St. Louis native, huh, okay. And then Sandy, at that time, she mentioned that his mother used to work in the department and I did not put it together again until, until just yesterday. So I'm so glad to have you back here. Um, he was a Mizzou assistant coach at a time when our program was really thriving. He has deep ties to our state and our recruiting footprint he looks very strategically at programs. He maximizes their advantages, and he builds a competitive culture, God bless you, evidenced in the two programs he has led, first taking Southern University from nine wins to a conference championship and an NCAA region in three years. And most recently, he took a Memphis program to its first winning season in six years. When you spend time with him, you know he is a man that with integrity, high character, low ego, and the energy and enthusiasm to bring out the best in our young men. He's gonna bring our baseball community back together and engage not just Tigers here in Columbia, but Tigers throughout the state and throughout the nation. Talia, Zion, 
and Laz. We are so enthused to have you in Colombia. We can't wait to get you guys here. You go to swim camp in a few hours, don't you? <laughs> it's awesome. We are so proud to have you leading our baseball program. So without further ado, let's welcome your new baseball coach, Coach Jackson. Uh, God is great. Um, it's, it's not very often that you can stand and say, uh, goal accomplished. This is a special place to me. And to be blessed with this opportunity to lead this program, you don't know how much it means. People have been asking me the last couple days, has it hit you yet? Guess what? It just hit me. <laughs> um, I want to thank Desiree, Nick, Rachel, Blair, Michael for giving me this opportunity. I want to thank Laird for giving me the opportunity at Memphis, uh, which ultimately led to me being able to be in this space. Um, all those that have supported me along the way in my career, players, coaches that have had impact on me uh, throughout my life, uh, but more importantly, my family. Um, couldn't do it without them. Wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Um, I've taken them <laughs> all over the place in very short periods of times. We've had a bunch of moves, um, and they've been with me and supported me every step of the way. So uh, without them, couldn't have done this um, and, and wouldn't be in this position. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready for this program uh, to get back to national prominence. I'm ready for this program to have a culture and an identity that is second to none. I'm ready to make sure that we put ourselves in a position where we make our alums proud, we make our fans proud, and they understand what being a Missouri Tiger and specifically a Missouri baseball Tiger means and they wear that proudly. We're gonna do great things here. I'm not gonna put a timetable on it because all good things take time. And we will do it in the time frame that is necessary for us to be successful. But I assure you, we will be successful. We will be competitive in the SEC. We will return to regional play and we'll all be done with the idea of ultimately getting to Omaha. And that's the ultimate goal. When you are in this position, when you're at this level, if you're not trying to win a championship at the national level and play at the highest level, you need to go do something else. And we don't have any reasons why we can't do that. From our mound to our plate is 60 feet, six inches like anywhere else. From home plate to first base is 90 feet like anywhere else. We use the same balls. We use really good bats and other equipment now it's just about our guys having the right heart, determination, and intestinal fortitude to put us in a position to go out and compete with the best in the country and prove that we belong in that space. When you look at the history of this program, this program has had a long history of success. And it was made up with guys that had the right makeup, with guys that had that grit, with guys that had that determination. And that is ultimately what we will get back to on day one. Anyone that plays in our program will understand that, they will wear that, and they will let everybody else know that. You will recognize the men that are in our program by how they carry themselves. Not because they have a jersey on, not because they have a baseball t-shirt on, but you'll look at them and how they conduct themselves both on and off the field. You will re readily know that's a Missouri baseball player. I'm excited about this opportunity. I can't thank you enough, and I'm ready to get started. Thank you.
So growing up in St. Louis, um, you know, being a Missouri fan growing up and, and once getting in started in my coaching career, and you know, I graduated from the University of Nebraska, but came back home and started coaching right away. Uh, as soon as I started coaching, I started working camps here. Um, and when you grow up a Mizzou fan and, you know, as a player, you don't think you're ever going to coach because you think you're going to play forever. Um, I, I rarely found out I wasn't good enough. So um, then when I slid into that coaching role and started to be around here, uh, and, and the things that they were doing here, this was a place that one, as a young coach, wanted to be an assistant coach here. Uh, and then when that pre opportunity presented itself uh, in 2010, uh, knew then at that time that I wanted to do everything I could to put myself in a position uh, that this was the place that I would stay and, and put myself in a position to be a head coach here. So long time coming. Eric, you know this place well, obviously. How big of a rebuild do you view this as right now? I think the biggest thing is culture right and getting the right people so when you talk about rebuild how long is it going to take us to change culture um, again the, the beauty of our game in baseball is you're playing against the game itself right and when, when you look at what Missouri has been able to do over the last few years there's been very competitive pieces there um, and now we just have to shift the mindset and get them to understand that the only thing that matters is your intent and your effort when you go out on the field and that we're gonna go out there and take it to everybody else. Everything else doesn't, isn't, doesn't equal up to having anything to do with how we're gonna play, um, you know, play the game. When you look at from a developmental standpoint, that is the one thing that in having conversations with Desiree and Blair and, and Nick, um, we need to have the same developmental tools as anybody in the country. And if we have the right developmental tools and the right people in place, then our ability to compete with anybody in the country is the same as anybody else's. You know, I mean, it, at the end of the day, it's it's deep, right? It's, you know, when you talk about your your 14th team in the league, um, a team that won a national championship a year ago, your 13th team in the league won a championship, national championship two years ago. Um, so so it's it's a deep competitive league. Uh, but where we're at in this this landscape of college athletics, there's a lot of parity in college baseball. And so we may need to put ourselves in a position to catch that wave and ride it and never look back. He and I have always been really, really close, um, and we both obviously share an affinity for this place, and, and he's a mentor for me. And, um, you know, I asked him, am I crazy? Uh, you know, and, uh, and because we both love this place, and, and when you look at his tenure here as a head coach, uh, some of the most successful time in the history of the program, and so no better person than me to lean on to him to say, hey, man, I believe that we can be one of the nation's top programs. Do, am I crazy for thinking that? And he's like, we were on that track. So no, you're not, and and so with him and I having those conversations, it was easy for me. Other than finding Max Scherzer, Aaron Crow, and Kyle Gibson, what do you take from Tim's time here that, that can make this successful? The mentality, the the, the culture, tough, um, gritty, um, all those types of things, hard hard working, um, and, and just playing the game at a at a very competitive level, um, and again despite any of the things that may be deemed as disadvantages, right? The one thing that our kids have to understand, we're never going to be victim, victims of our own circumstance. It is what it is. Um, and if it doesn't fit you, then this isn't the place for you. But we're not going to make excuses for our ability to not go out and be competitive. Nothing affects that but us. And so we need to understand that's how we're going to go about our business. How do you go about engaging and maybe in some cases re-engaging the alumni of the program? That seems to be really important to a lot of successful SEC schools. So what does that look like? How do you go about getting on track with some of the guys who support you? I'm pretty fortunate that I know a bunch of them already. Um, and so I think for me, that'll be easy. Um, and, and, and I know a bunch of them from spanning years, guys that played here in the 80s to guys that we recruited that played for us here in the 2000s. So bridging that gap um, is not going to be a problem. Um, as you can imagine, I was just telling, telling some people the other day, uh, just as of yesterday, I had 422 unread text messages. Well, as I scroll through, I start to hear from the Rick Zagonis um, of the world. Uh, Kyle Gibson and I had a conversation. Um, Bryce Montez de Oca's mother called me um, and congratulated me. So 
getting back to that, I'm, I'm not worried about that at all because those guys know the time and effort that I put in when I was here. They knew how important it was to me when I was here, so they know that I'll be representing them uh, in the best light and getting us back to where we need to be. And how important is it, I mean, whether you look at David Price and Vanderbilt or Todd Helton in Tennessee, there's tons of examples. How important is that in college baseball right now? Oh, it's huge because when you have former players that are alums, that are big leaguers, that is to show what we're capable of. So then now the discussion isn't, well, this guy's produ this program's produced this or this program's produced that. Look at what we've produced. So if it was capable for these guys to come through and put themselves in a position to have long tenures in the, in the big leagues, get a bunch of accolades, be Mr. 3030, um, win a Cy Young, all those types of things, that means it's possible for you as well. You, you discuss it, but it doesn't matter uh, for me personally. Um, again, if you were telling me that we were playing on a field that had different dimensions than everybody else, well, wait a minute now. We're not on a level playing field. But when we have the same things at the basic core that everybody else has, then that's all that matters. Would we like to have some different things? Yes, we would. But again, as I told you, we just mentioned teams 14 and 13 in our league who have everything are teams 13 and 14 in our league. Special. Um, again, you, you're talking about, uh, unfortunately, we're in 2023 talking about breaking glass ceilings when it comes to those types of things. Um, hopefully, uh, as I stated last year, hopefully we get ourselves in a position where that's not so such a big deal. Um, but what I do understand is I understand the magnitude of it, specifically in the landscape that we're in. When we talk about the lack of black players in the game uh, at the major league levels and at the youth levels. So hopefully this puts us in a position where people understand what is capable when you go about your business the right way and we start to rejuvenate that interest and we create more opportunities for coaches and players coming along. Um, so <laughs> so uh, I'll give you the story about with, with, with our boys, uh, with my wife, um, keep in mind, uh, we just moved. Um, and so um, she got text messages from people and, um, and uh, that, that there was a change. And, and she knows how I feel about this place. We were married uh, here, uh, not here, but when we got married, we were living here. Both of our boys were born here. Uh, matter of fact, Zion, my oldest, uh, she went into labor in 2011 uh, in the Big 12 championship in the first inning and we got walked off, unfortunately. Um, but I go to the car, hey, I'm probably ride back with the team. She's like, no, you're gonna ride back with us. Um, so, uh, so, so this place is very, very special. So for her, it was uh, an understanding of what it was for our boys. Um, you know, they had some, some games and um, I'm driving back in the car with them and um, we having conversations. They had a sleepover and I talked to them about, hey, what'd you do at your sleepover? Well, we had some friends. Like, what'd you guys do? Oh, I just had some conversations. I'm like, well, who'd you talk to? I said, oh, I talked to Blair and uh, I talked to the AD from Mizzou. And why are we talking to her? I was like, well, they're interested in offering me the job at University of Missouri to be a baseball coach. And my oldest was, well, you, you got to take it, right? <laughs> um, and so I said, yes. I said, but I just wanted to check with you guys and make sure you guys were okay with it before I made a decision. So um, I think we're all excited uh, about what this means um, for our family uh, and what it means for everybody involved in this program. Yes, uh, we, we had a call with them, a Zoom call with them. And, and, and I told them, you know, listen, I understand you didn't agree to play for me. Um, you were recruited by somebody else, potentially even recruited to a different system. But if you're going to go out and look at other options, then at least give me the opportunity to recruit you as well. I'm not going to assume that you're going to stay, but let's go through the process. The same recruiting process that you're going to go through, if you get in the portal and you start talking to the other coaches, you might as well have that conversation with me. You already live here. You're already in class here. You know everything about this place. Now there's just been a change at the top where well, you're going to go through a change at the top, whether you stay here, whether you go someplace else. So at least give us that opportunity to see if this is a fit for everybody involved. Eric, with your, your track record at, at Southern and Memphis with the quick turnarounds, like that's what I mentioned, is there anything you take from those two experiences that you feel like you can apply here to do the same kind of thing and turn things around? 
really, really stress the importance to our guys' culture, that we have to have the mentality that we're going to go out and there are no excuses, right? Because at the end of the day, what these kids don't understand and we do all understand as adults, nobody cares why you don't get something done. Either you get it done or you don't. And the reasons why you do or you don't doesn't really matter. If we don't get it done, well then let's figure out why we didn't so we can fix that process. So from day one, I want our guys to understand, no excuses. Go after it, bust our tails, put ourselves in a position to be the best that we can be, but more, more importantly, focus on the process. And we will be process oriented, not result driven oriented, right? Too many times you, you focus on the result and you can't control the result. So if we can get our kids to focus on the process, which is something that they can control every single day, and we're striving every single day just to be a little bit better than we were the day before, then when you add all those days up, it puts us in a position to be very successful. And when you talk about this league and how we're going to be tested in this league and conference specifically, if you're going out there and grinding it and putting yourself in competitive environments and having success as we define success, then you know that we can go out and put ourselves in a position to make that trip to Omaha. With the portal and having to build next year's roster and all that, where does Iron getting a staff in place fall and you have some of the key as well with some of the process? Yeah, obviously you want to be able to get that going because you, you got kids that are here currently that are a question what what's the direction going to be and then you have kids that now that this change is made, again, 422 unread text messages. So um, everything is going to move very rapidly. Um, there's, there, as far as the staffing piece of it goes, I wanna make sure that we put together a staff that fits, that understands what we're about, and is going to be able to be in the best position to teach and develop just as good, if not better, than anybody else in the country. Because that's what is going to allow us to be successful. We're going to have to teach. We're going to have to develop, not only them as people, but we're gonna have to teach and develop them as players. So I wanna be able to amass those guys that can help us do that. It's given me a well-rounded perspective of every aspect of the game, right? At this point, I've done everything there is to do. And so then now when I'm talking to our players and when we're having these discussions about different phases of their lives as it applies to the game of baseball, I've been able to say I've had experience in all those areas. So be it, you know, guys looking for agents or whatever the case may be and talking about those different things, what it's going to look like, what that transition is going to look like from college to professional baseball, having those conversations. Um, so again, I'm the consummate learner. And so all those experiences have put me in a position to just continue to fill that toolbox, if you will, and have better knowledge to be able to assist our players in being successful. I think the things that they've done and the commitments that Desiree has made to me at this point show the commitment. Um, when you talk about developmental staff, when you talk about developmental tools and those things that play some of the things that we're going to do to enhance what we currently have, lets me know that she's definitely invested. And, and the biggest thing for me when making this decision, as much as this is my dream job, as much as I have always said, this is the place that I want to be, it had to be right. And I told my wife, I was comfortable. If it wasn't the right fit, then it wasn't the right fit. We'd stay at Memphis and we were perfectly fine there. But being able to spend some time with Desiree, obviously I know Blair. Um, what I learned about her is she hates to lose like I hate to lose. And that's where the starter is. When you have somebody that hates to lose more than they love to win, anything is accomplished, can be accomplished at that time. I think NIL, obviously, we know it's really changed the landscape because you have legislative aspects being applied to college athletics when it comes to NIL. So it's, it's definitely been a been at big impact. And then when you talk about being in the SEC, again, if you're going to be in the neighborhood, then your house has to look the same as everybody else's house to some degree. And so I think the things that we're doing here are cutting edge uh, with the things that we're doing to put ourselves in a position to be in that NL NIL conversation. And I think we're going to be right in the mix with everybody else to do the things necessary to provide the best opportunity for our student athletes. It started today. 
today. If, if they don't understand the passion and, and pride that I have in this place and they don't feed off of that, well, then I just have to continue to build that, right? You got Ian here and, and other people here. And we have an alumni base that is going to be uh, readily accessible and, and show their passion and, and desire for this place to be successful. And so I think it's that, it's that community outreach and making sure that, again, we send our players out, we're out in the community, people understand. Um, and I think what people like, they like change and they like change that has a positive direction. And I don't know how to put out any other message than that. And so I think if they believe and buy into what it is that we're doing in the direction that we're going, they can't help but be as excited about it as I am. When I left in 2015, I left for family reasons. Um, I didn't know if I was going to get back into college coaching again at that point, right? Um, I, I've, I've had one job outside of baseball. I was a male nanny for a family that had two autistic boys. I was an early childhood special education minor. If I didn't coach, I was going to teach kindergarten. So when we left and we left for family reasons, I was prepared to be a stay-at-home dad and have a blast. And we were having a blast, and then I think they got tired of me, and they decided to be in school every day. And, um, and what, what ultimately led me back to coaching was um, in March of 2017, my wife said to me, you don't have the same passion that you had when you were at Missouri. You're passionate about what you do. I see that now. We need to make a change and find the situation that's going to feed that passion. So once I got back into it, that was the ultimate goal was then, yes, I'm back into the coaching reins. I have someone uh, in my wife and partner who is supporting me in that. Then, yeah, figuring out how it was going to happen was, was definitely the ultimate goal.